Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to finish up our discussion on quadratic equations. So from the previous three videos, we talked about how to solve quadratic equations using factoring, this group property, completing the square, and we also talked about determining the most efficient method to use when solving a quadratic equation, but now we're ready to solve problems that are modeled by quadratic equations. So it turns out there are several different applications that involve solving quadratic equations, and we're going to talk about a few of them. So here's the first one. The Pythagorean theorem comes up in terms of quadratic equations. So remember that the Pythagorean theorem is in terms of right triangles only, and it says that the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs, so the legs are called the sides of the triangle, the right triangle, it must equal the square of the length of the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So if the legs of the triangle have lengths A and length B, so in terms of this right triangle, you have this side is called a leg or side, and B is also called a leg or a side. But what's most important is that the hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. So a right angle is a 90 degree angle or a corner in a right triangle. So this is called a right angle and you'll see a little tiny box or a little square that indicates that it's a right angle in a right triangle. The side that's opposite the right angle is always called the hypotenuse. And it has length c. So the Pythagorean theorem says if you take the length of this side or leg and you square its length, you take this length of the side or leg and you square its length, so you get a squared plus b squared, it must equal the length of the hypotenuse squared or c squared. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared is called the Pythagorean theorem. So where does it come in with quadratic equations? Let's try example six. Pythagorean theorem, the base of a 30 foot ladder is 10 feet from the building. The ladder reaches the flat roof. How tall is the building? And round your answer to two decimal places. So we talked about solving word problems in an earlier video. There's a five step process when you solve word problems. Always identify what you're being asked to find first. And we need to find out how tall is the building. So it might help to draw a figure or a picture. So it might help to draw a figure to figure out what is happening in this problem. So you have a building with a flat roof. We don't know what the height of the building is. And then the building has this ladder that's leaning up against it from ground level. And it reaches the top. So we're going to label these sides. This is the ladder which is also the hypotenuse of the right triangle. And it was 30 feet. We have that the ladder, the base of the ladder was 10 feet from the building. So that's this bottom side or leg of the triangle. It's a right triangle because the building will be vertical with the ground level. And then you have the building with a flat roof. But notice that we don't know what the height of the building is, so let's just call it b. It will be b feet. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So anytime that you use a formula, write it down first. So Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's identify what the a, b, and the c are in this problem. So the a is the length of one side and it's being squared. So let's call the 10 feet a, so it's 10 squared, plus we already labeled this side, which is the height of the building, b, so let's just keep it b, so b squared, and it equals the length of the hypotenuse squared, and the hypotenuse length is 30 feet, so 30 squared. So we're going to solve for b, so let's simplify first before you start taking square roots. So 10 squared is 100, plus b squared is equal to 30 squared is 900. So now move all the like terms to the same side of the equation. So subtract 100 to the right side of the equation to get b squared is equal to 800. And now it becomes a quadratic equation because we need to solve for b, that's the variable, and it's the variables being raised to the second power. So it is a quadratic equation. And which method makes the most sense to use to solve this quadratic equation? 
Well, notice that one side is being squared and the other side is non-zero, so you can use the squirt property. So take the square root on both sides of the equation. So you'll have b, after you take the square root of b squared, you'll have b left equals plus or minus square root of 800. Don't forget the plus or minus, because the plus or minus comes up when you use the square root property. So we know that this means there are two different solutions. b is equal to square root of 800, or b is equal to the negative square root of 800. But we're talking about b being the height of the building. The height of the building cannot be a negative number. So that means square root of negative 800 is not the solution. The height of the building must be square root of 800. But we need to around to two decimal places. So square root of 800 is about 28.28, and don't forget the units, feet. So the height of the building is 28.28 feet tall. Okay, so now that we know how to set up an equation in terms of word problems and solving a quadratic equation, let's try a couple more. So example seven is talking about dimensions of a garden. A square garden has a walkway that is three feet wide and it's going on the outer edge of the square garden. The area of the square garden and the walkway is 18,000 feet squared or 18,000 square feet. Determine the dimensions so that's the length and the width of the planted area. So this time we don't have to worry about drawing a figure. It's given to us in the problem. And notice that they're already labeling the x as the length or the width, because it is a square, the length or the width of the planted area. So let's let x represent the length or the width. of the planted area in feet. So that's the first step in any five-step process involving solving word problems. Write down what the variable is, so that way you have an idea what the answer will mean at the end. So step two, let's figure out if there are any other unknowns that's in the problem. Well, x is representing the length and the width of the planted area, but we don't know what the length or the width is of the planted area and the walkway. So let's figure that out next. So the walkway is three feet all the way around the garden. So that means that this side with the planted area and the walkway must be x plus three feet plus another three feet for the other side of the walkway. So you have x plus six is this entire length for the, the entire garden. And same thing for this side. It will also be x plus 6. You'll have x for the planted area plus 3 feet walkway plus 3 foot walkway. So you have x plus 3 plus 3 or x plus 6. So the reason why we need to figure out these is that the area is length times width. And we have 18,000 square feet is the area of the entire garden. So the entire garden's length is x plus 6. The entire garden's width is x plus 6. And the area is 18,000. So this is the most important step, setting up the equation correctly. You have x plus 6 times x plus 6. Well, that's x plus 6 to the second power, in parentheses to the second power, equals 18,000. And so this is a quadratic equation because the highest power on the variable would be 2. So which method would be the most appropriate to use this time to solve for x? Well, squirt property again. The reason why the squirt property is, notice that the left side of the equation is being squared, and there's nothing else that's being squared, just x plus 6, and the other side of the equation is not 0. So you can take the square root on both sides to cancel out the square power, where you have x inside that parentheses. So take the square root on the left side, and then plus or minus square root of 18,000. 
So the square root and the square will cancel each other out, and you'll have x plus 6 is equal to the plus or minus square root of 18,000. So in the last example, we found out that the negative square root was not actually the answer because we can't have a negative length. Keep in mind, we haven't solved the equation yet, so don't eliminate the negative square root yet. This means you have two different equations. You have x plus 6 equals positive square root 18,000, or x plus 6 equals negative square root 18,000. So to solve these equations, subtract 6 with each one. So you have x equals negative 6 plus the square root of 18,000, or x equals negative 6 minus square root 18,000. So notice that this second square root, you have negative 6 minus square root. That's going to give you a negative real number. Well, we're talking about x being the length or the width of the planted area. It can't be a negative value. So you can exclude this value from the answer. So only one answer makes sense. It's x equals negative 6 plus the square root of 18,000. And that is approximately, if you round the two decimal places, 128.16 feet. So in other words, we found out what x represents. It was the length or the width of the planted area. It's 128.16 feet. So the dimensions. of the planted area is 128.16 feet by 128.16 feet. So usually you represent area as length and width. So it's 128.16 feet by 128.16 feet and it is a square because the length and the width are the same length. So you might be wondering where does this x plus 6 come from? Well, let's just write this out so that we have an idea of where these come from for the future. We'll need this for the next example as well. So the length of the planted area and the walkway. Is, well, this was x feet for the planted area and we're adding 3 feet for the walkway, that's not being included for the planted area, and we have another 3 feet walkway on the other side as well. So it's x plus 3 plus 3, which is x plus 6. That's how we got this side, x plus 6, and this was feet. And for the same reason, because it's, it's a square, the width of the planted area and the walkway is the same. It would be x feet for the planted area plus 3 feet walkway and another 3 feet walkway. So this will give you x plus 6 as well, feet. So you'll have x plus 6 feet on one side and x plus 6 feet on the other side and we were given 18,000 square feet for the area of the entire garden, not just the planted area, but the entire garden, including the walkway. Okay, so let's try out the last example now. This is going to work very similarly as example seven. We're going to form an open top box. So what that means is that it's a box with no top on it, but it will have the other five sides. So a box has a square base as depicted in this figure, but it has no top. It is to be constructed from a square piece of cardboard and you are going to cut out four inch squares from each corner and then fold up the sides as it's depicted in the figure. So in other words, here's the original piece of cardboard. We're going to cut out little tiny squares which are four inches wide and four inches tall on each of the four corners of this cardboard and then what's left over is this dark shaded region. You fold these parts up. So you fold this up, you fold this up, you fold this part up, and you fold this up, and you get the four sides of the box. And then they're telling us in the problem that the open top box holds 400 inches cubed. So this is in terms of three-dimensional shape, so the inches will be cubed. You'll be talking about volume. 
What is the length of each side of the square piece of cardboard? So in other words, they're asking us what is the length of the cardboard before we cut the corners out. So let's start with that part. Let x represent the length or the width. of the original sheet of cardboard. That is what's not being told in this problem. We don't know what the original sheet of cardboard was in terms of length or width. So that's what we're going to call x. So that's the first step in the five-step process with word problems. Write down what the variable represents that we're trying to find in the problem. And now we need to figure out step two. Are there any other unknowns that we don't have in the problem? Well, we know that we're going to need to use volume. Volume of a box is length times width times height. Now, this length, width, and height, this is talking about the length, width, and height of the box, not the original sheet of cardboard. So, we need to talk about what happens after you cut out the four inches from each corner. So, after four inches are cut from each corner, then the width of the box is Let's go back and look at the figure. If we call the original sheet of cardboard x inches, so that's this entire side, x inches, and it was a square base or a square piece of cardboard, so that means if this was represented as x, then this can also be represented as x for the length or the width. What happens if you cut out four inches from each corner? The last problem, we were adding the walkway into the square garden. Well, this time you're taking away four inches from this corner, and you're taking away four inches from this corner. So it won't be x minus four, it would be this part that's being folded up is x minus eight inches. Same thing on this side. If you have originally x inches for the length or the width, and you cut out four inches, and you cut out another four inches, this side would be also x minus 8 inches left over. So that gives you the length and the width. So we have to take x, subtract 4, and subtract 4 to give this x minus 8 inches. And the same thing for the, for the length. So after 4 inches are cut from each corner, Then the length of the box will be the same. It'll be x minus 4 inches from one corner, minus 4 inches from another corner. So it will be x minus 8 inches for the length. So now we figured out the length and the width. Now the last question is, what is the height of the box? Well, keep in mind, if you're cutting out 4 inches and then you're folding up what's left over, the height will also be 4 inches. So we have a formula to figure out the volume. The volume would be x minus 8 for the length, x minus 8 for the width, and the height is 4. In the problem, they told us that the volume of the box is 400 inches cubed. So the volume, 4 times x minus 8 times x minus 8, is equal to 400. So this is the most important step, setting up the equation correctly. And notice that it will be a quadratic equation because you have 4 times x minus 8 to the second power equals 400. So the highest power on the variable would be 2, so it's a quadratic equation. And now again, what method would be the best to use to solve for x, where x is located inside the parentheses that's being squared? You can use the square root property again. Okay, but this time, notice that the left side isn't just something squared. You have x minus 8 squared, all squared, but you have this 4 that's not being squared. 
So the first step is to divide both sides of the equation by 4, so that way you get the squared part isolated. So x minus 8, all to the second power, equals 400 divided by 4 gives you 100. And now you can use a square root property. Take the square root on both sides. So square root of x minus 8, all to the second, equals plus or minus square root of 100. And now we know that there are two different equations here. You have x minus 8 equals plus or minus 10, because the square root of 100 can be simplified to just 10. And this gives us x minus 8 equals 10, or x minus 8 equals negative 10. So we have two different equations that we need to solve for x. So add 8 to both the equations. You get x equals 18, and that's in inches, or x is equal to negative 2, and that's inches. Well, again, you can't have a negative length, so negative 2 is not really the answer. And so we found out the length and the width. So the x was representing the length and the width of the original sheet of cardboard. So the length of the original sheet of cardboard is 18 inches. And the width of the original sheet of cardboard is also 18 inches. Because the original sheet of cardboard was a square. So now let's check. There is a way to check your answer. Make sure that the volume of the box needed to be 400 cubic inches. So the volume is length times width times height the volume would be well the length of the box was 18 inches minus 4 inches minus 4 inches so that's 10 inches times the width is the same so another 10 inches for the box times the height of the box which was 4 inches and if you multiply these together, 10 times 10 times 4, you get 400, and that is inches times inches times inches, or inches cubed. And so it does check. That is the correct volume of the box. So this finishes up our discussion on solving quadratic equations in terms of applications. We had one problem where we had to use a Pythagorean theorem to help us set up the equation, and then we had a couple equations that we had to use a geometric formula, area for one and volume for the other example. And then we had to use the square root property in each of these three equations to solve for x. To figure out the length of the original sheet of cardboard, the width of the original sheet of cardboard. If you have any questions about setting up the equations in terms of quadratic equations for this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we solve linear inequalities.